we now consider a series of exercises all related to the absence of arbitrage on the market. Now, why is the absence of arbitrage on the market fundamental for us? Because we know that under the risk neutral measure, it is not possible to have an arbitrage. So if we are able to build an arbitrage, automatically we get that we have some very big problem about the existence of the risk neutral measure. And since the risk neutral measure is a fundamental tool for us to get rid of the drift problem, to get a common framework for pricing that allows us to be all uh, in agreement about the benchmark price and so on, as we have seen in the previous classes, uh, checking for the absence of arbitrage becomes fundamental. Now, as we shall see in these exercises, we will consider two of the exercises together and one is just left uh, for you. You find all the details in the lecture notes. We will see that, for example, a condition for the absence of arbitrage, so a necessary condition for the absence of arbitrage, is that we cannot have two different risk-free rates given different rates on the same market because if there are two different risk-free assets that give a different rate, then we can easily build an arbitrage. So we can easily build a strategy that, uh, at the end of the day, is an arbitrage. We will then see that, and this is the exercise I leave to you, if the risky asset mimics too much the risk-free asset, again, we could have an arbitrage. So another condition is that no risky asset can actually behave as the risk-free. Finally, we will consider a very important property that links the payoff of a European put with the payoff of the European uh, call. This is what we call the put call parity. We will see that if the put call parity is not uh, satisfied, is not guaranteed, then we can build an arbitrage. So the put call parity is another requirement for the absence of arbitrage. And so, if you want, also for the existence of the risk neutral match. All these conditions are necessary, but not sufficient, okay? So it's not difficult to see that we can still have the put call parity, but for example, having two different risk-free rates, we can still have an arbitrage or vice versa. Okay, so these are all necessary but not sufficient conditions, but they are very important to understand how our market, our, how our uh, controlled environment works for the pricing of the different options. Later in the course, we will see that some of these results will be quite important to us. For what concerns, conversely, the real world, Knowing these results can be useful to get a free lunch if, for example, because of some mispricing, you observe that the put call parity is not satisfied or you observe the existence of two different uh, risk-free rates on the market or the existence of a risky asset that, at the end, mimics the risk-free, then you can build an arbitrage and good for you, you can get a free lunch. So let's show that two different risk-free rates cannot coexist on the market unless we want an arbitrage. And in that case, obviously, the risk-neutral measure is no longer well-defined. Okay, so let's take as a secondary risk-free asset the standard risky asset, ST, but let's assume that sigma is equal to zero, so the Brownian part disappears. Now, let's assume that both uh, S00 and S0 are normalized to be equal to one. What we want to show is that a necessary condition not to have arbitrage is that mu is equal to R. So both the risk-free assets need to give the same rate of return. Now, an arbitrage is a portfolio whose value in zero is equal to zero and whose value at maturity is positive almost surely. Now, let's start by considering the case in which mu is strictly larger than r. 
Now, what can we do in T0? In T0, we can short sell one unit of the risk free so that theta 0, 0 is equal to minus 1. And with that amount, we can buy one unit of the stock. We keep on calling it the stock, but remember that we are considering a degenerate case, so it's actually another risk free asset. Okay? So we have theta 0, 0 equal to minus 1 and theta 0 equal to 1. Now, the cost of this is just zero because we finance the buying of the stock with short selling one unit of the risk free. Okay? Now, given the assumptions that we have, mu is strictly larger than r. So, what happens? For every t between zero and maturity, we have that st, which is equal to the exponential of mu t, is strictly larger than ert, which is equal to st zero. Now, it is simple to see that the strategy we are considering is self-financing and that since mu is larger than r at maturity, we have that the value of the strategy is positive almost surely. So, since its value in zero was zero, it is self-financing and its value at maturity is positive almost surely, it represents an arbitrage. If conversely we assume that mu is smaller than r, we can obtain the same result by short selling the so called stock and by buying the risk free. The only condition not to have arbitrage is therefore that mu and r are exactly the same. In another exercise that, as I told you, I leave to you, we can show that if there exists an asset, possibly a risky asset, that mimics the risks free, then it needs to be the risk free. So it cannot be something else. Because otherwise, once again, we can build a strategy that proves itself to be an arbitrage. Not to have arbitrage, we can show that if the price process Pt of an asset satisfies the differential equation you see on your screen, where Gt is a stochastic process, then Gt needs to be equal to R, the risk free rate, almost surely for every t. In other words, if we have an asset that mimics the behavior of the risk free asset, then it must be the risk free asset. The last thing that we discussed together is the put call parity. So we check that a condition for the absence of arbitrage on the market in the Black and Scholes and Merton framework is this important connection between the payoff of a European call and the payoff of a European put. If this connection that we call the put call parity is not satisfied, we can easily build an arbitrage. And if we can easily build an arbitrage, once again, I stress, we are essentially putting into danger the existence of the risk neutral measure. According to the put call parity, if CT is the value in T of a European call and PT is the value in T of a European put, we have that CT minus PT needs to be equal to ST, the price of the underlying asset in T, minus the discounted value of the strike price in T. Now, to simplify the treatment, but without any loss of generality, let's assume that both our call and put are at the money for work. What does it mean? It means that we are essentially eliciting naive expectations for what concerns the behavior of the risky asset. We are essentially assuming that the strike price K is equal to the value of the risky asset at time zero, S zero, when it is invested at the risk-free rate. So K is equal to S zero times E to the power R capital T. Given all the assumptions, the put call parity becomes C0 equal to P0. So C0 minus P0 equal to 0. Now, if we assume that we violate the put call parity, so for example, we assume that C0 is equal to P0 plus a positive element X, we can show that we can actually build an arbitrage. So at time zero, we can short sell a unit of the call option, getting P0 plus X. This is the value that we have assumed. So C0 is equal to P0 plus X. 
with P0 we buy one unit of the put and the quantity X is then invested in the risk-free asset. Finally, we enter into a forward contract in which we accept to receive S capital T minus K at maturity. If the quantity will be positive, we actually get it. If it is negative, we have to pay it. Now, what we can notice is that the price of such a forward contract at time zero is actually zero. So the cost of this strategy for us is zero. This is a self-financing strategy and between time zero and capital T, that is to say maturity, we do nothing. We just sleep or have an ice cream, but we don't care about the strategy any longer. At time T, we wake up and we consider the different values of the different assets in our portfolio, the put, the call, the forward, and so on. It is very simple to see, as you see on your screen, that the final value of our uh, portfolio is positive, we almost surely. So, in other words, we were able to build an arbitrage because the put call parity was violated.